YouTube search words, Rick Larson, main crop garden number five. That's what I'm standing in right now. And I harvested Selsfi, white mammoth Selsfi, a couple of days ago, and I noticed that it's beginning to become hard already. Probably because of the very abnormally warm temperatures we have. Now, in the past, I can recall having a day or two like this, but very seldom is it a whole stretch, like a week or no, it's probably getting close to 10 days. Very warm weather. We even had some 70 degree temperatures in that stretch. And now the weathermen are trying to fool us. They're saying, oh, there's this huge cold front coming and it's gonna be an extended cold period. But I looked in the 15 day forecast and they're talking, you know, lows in, at night of the coldest I saw was 30 degrees, which for these cool season crops, that's nothing. And that's looking out, you know, eight days from now before that's coming. But be that as it may, I know the people who make a lot of money, they don't want us to recognize that there are changes happening right now because that might change their money flow. And I need to take out this salsify, that's what's important. Because if it gets hard as a rock, it's not palatable and I don't need to make a whole bunch of salsify seed because I got plenty. That's what I'm gonna do now. <laughs> and give you a lecture on rich people. Gotta be careful lest we snap the roots. I think these were late planted last year. That's probably why they're not as big. But still, that's plenty. When I get a really big one, then I'll go, oh, look at that one. <laughs> oh, look at that one. <laughs> So what I've been doing is, is I experimented last fall when I harvested a whole bunch at once and I put them in the refrigerator. I didn't wash them, I just kind of knocked all the dirt off and they kept them in the fridge for a month before I had them all ate. And they were good. They stayed nice and firm. There's a, there's a really big one, that's the biggest one so far. So that's what I'm going to do with these. I basically eat most of this stuff for breakfast and I contribute to the other meals. But we're going to want to get to planting other things in here. And this is what I had plans to do. Oh, look at these weird ones. They got all these nodules. I don't know why that is. I wonder if Salsfi fixes nitrogen. This is some relationship with uh, a bacteria. Huh, I gotta look that up. Maybe nobody knows. There's a big caterpillar, I'm not sure what this is. Some grub. I'm not going to give it the benefit of the doubt, if you know what I mean. <laughs> He's now becoming fertilizer. I think all these side shoots are a, are a sign that I have lots of nitrogen. And I don't even add any nitrogen. It's just from the soil life. There's a couple nice ones. There's a nice root. These are really some nice grasses right here. So I'm gonna wash up a bunch of these. The ones on the edge, around the edges, I'll just put those in the compost, but these fresh ones that are coming out of the top, I'm gonna wash those up and eat those in a salad for lunch today. And here they are. These are all Selsfi roots. 
and salsify tops. So I'm going to dig out this little patch that left yet too, and I'm going to leave one to make seed because they got pretty flowers. And then this bed will be ready for planting somewhere in the near future. Alright, then after that, we got to take out this pars parsnips because the same thing will happen. They're going to get hard as a rock. And those stems that are coming, those brown dried out stems, that's skirret. I'm going to dig those out too. Then I got a whole nother bed there that I can plant up between the bricks. All right, all right, right here we have edible burdock that's greening up. It's ready to be harvested. And then we have edible burdock here that was covered in this straw right here. And it's white because it hasn't been exposed to the sun. I'm wondering if it tastes a little bit better or differently. So that's going to be an interesting experiment. Maybe I'll let you know. And there's some edible burdock that I'm going to dig out right now. We're going to do a ferment. Alright, we got a couple of roots here that are large enough to deal with. I actually cut one off so it was down in there pretty far. And then we have all these where they're pretty small. I mean some of these maybe I could do something with them. I guess that one I can. I could probably do something with all of them, but I don't want to bother cleaning. But since I I have these here, I might as well replant them. Let's see what happens. And here's a row that I planted. These were the longest roots. And right along this fence edge. This is the sun side of the fence. And next spring, I expect this to thaw out first, and I'll harvest those right away. All right, I washed up the burdock roots after cutting the leaves off and here are the horseradish tops that are segmented apart there's five of them and here's the horseradish root after I washed it in rainwater that'll be interesting to ferment that too and here's where I put the burdock tops just to find out if they'll regrow there's the harvest of burdock root and horseradish root here I have a bucket of rainwater and I rinse the soil off the roots here and then I can put the soil back on the garden by watering the plants. And here's where I planted the burdock and the horseradish. Here are the five segments that came from the top. And then all of these represent one of those little segments of root. <laughs> I didn't pay any attention as to what is down or up. So it'll be interesting to see if some of these sprout in reverse. We'll keep an eye on it, see what happens. So here we have the horseradish root relatively cleaned up, burdock roots, and white sulse feed that I harvested the day before. A smaller part of the horseradish root I didn't skin, but this larger part I did. There were a lot of little fissures and holes that were full of dirt. I got it out, so I don't know if it's going to be a difference in texture or if the skin is stringy or what. We'll find out. It's the largest burdock root scraped and cut, and it was very tender. When I cut it apart, it likes to turn black fast, so I got to get it in that salt water right away. All right, here's our jar of ferment that includes horseradish, edible burdock, and white salsify. And alongside, I'm doing a half gallon of bean ferment. These are the skins from the edible burdock. I'm positive there's a lot of elements in here. I know there's a lot of iron in burdock. We're not going to be putting those to waste. We're going to put them in the compost bucket and I'm going to aerobically compost them and those elements are going to go back into the soil.